is going on, everybody? Well, the year is progressing very quickly, and we are already into February. It's February 2nd. Um, February goes by quick for me every year anyways. The start of the year usually starts out slow. January seems like this long, but um, January seems this long when it's really this long. But February always is a shorter, day, shorter amount of days anyways by a day or two. <coughs> <coughs> and um, it, it always goes by real quick and before we know it we're into spring March kicks off and the next thing you know it's hot and summer's here and it's amazing how fast it, it just goes by um, I don't have a lot of good news for you there is some good news on the on the table today um, one of the, the bad things as you can tell is I'm sick um, it's not COVID because I can smell and I can taste, um, but I've been sick now for four days and it just, it's really an up and down battle. I start to feel better. I feel like, all right, I'm out of it. And then boom, it comes back and a fever comes back. And it's probably the worst flu, head cold, whatever it is that I've had since I moved to Texas. And I'm really struggling with it. Um, to top that off, we've been under uh, a very minor, but freeze ice storm since Monday, four days of it. The trees and everything are still iced over. Um, what's unique is, is that um, I had made a comment in the last rundown that um, I was wrong about winter, and, and I, I feel like I was wrong. Weathermen are always wrong. Um, but the long term, remember I said a week back that the overall, the next four to six week prediction is, is lighter than normal. Um, and so I feel like, number one, date-wise, we are on the backside of winter. And number two, even though we had this light freeze, that's really what it was. It wasn't a hard freeze. It was a one degree difference. If we had been one or two degrees warmer, it would have been all rain and no freeze. Um, and it was unique. One of you made a comment that said, Mike, in Florida, when, when the freeze is coming and, and the orange trees are blossoming, they actually spread with water because the, the light freeze like we just had will savor those buds in those trees um, and flowers. So hopefully it didn't kill anything. Um, and I'm trying to be optimistic, but you know, the old man winter still sticks around and we still two step. That was the whole point of these lessons is, you know, to communicate what's going on and how we feel about the lake. Um, and, and we're Texas two stepping. And right now we are definitely on the back step. Um, we have cool trended massively, um, really have. And, and the, the good news, the really good news is that the lake has risen a lot. Um, and when I say a lot, I mean, you know, four, five, six inches. We're now 398.18, which means we're we're inside the four foot below pool now. We're about four foot ten inches below full pool, um, four foot nine inches almost. <coughs> Every point two five is three inches. Um, so we really came up considerably. That's about five inches um, from just Monday, and we haven't melted everything off yet. Um, it's still raining. There's still some more rain to come. The, that's the upside. We, we need to keep this going on. We need the next six to eight weeks or so, we need two, three feet of rain, at least two or three feet of rain. We have about a two to three foot fall every year in Lake Fork, regardless. And, and, and it's just what we use. When we get to June, July, August, September, the lake drops two to three feet. And so we at least need to have that rise this year, or we're going to end up at eight, nine, ten feet below full pool before we know it. But the 398.18 puts us at 4.10 inches below full pool, which is the best we've gotten to pretty much since low pool, since they lowered the water. The bad side is, is that's cold water now this time going in those creeks. The melt off. It's rain, cold, cold rain right on the bridge of freezing, freezing rain. And as it's melting off and draining in these creeks very slowly, it's cold, cold. So 47, 49 degrees is the main body. Some of these creeks are even colder. And so what I'm getting at is if, man, I just wouldn't go fish fork this week unless you're really looking for one big bite. And as I said that, honestly, you know, if you're really persistent, you probably could find a bunch of fish, a, 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 some fish really bunched up in a creek swing, a channel swing or whatnot, especially fish that were back in the creeks that would kind of retract and pull back to a channel swing or whatnot. <laughs> they're going to be cold um, without vegetation and things like that. They're going to be tough to catch. Um, but I would just stick to the jig. 
um, Santone Finesse Jig or a Santone Rattling Jig, um, JC Spicy Craw, or obviously this time of year, there's nothing better than the black and blue. Um, I like a black and blue orange. Um, and I'm, I'm really going to make sure that two things that I fish really, really slow. Three things, let me tell you. One, I fish really, really slow. Number two, I'm going to hit the creek swings and channel banks, and I'm going to hit every piece of wood. And I mean, make sure the jig bumps the piece of wood and leave it there bumped up against the piece of wood or roots. Um, I'm going to specifically look for tree stumps that have roots. So when I throw by all sides of that stump, and I feel ones that have roots, those are the ones I'm going to concentrate on. Those are the ones I'm going to come back to. Um, if they don't have any roots or crunch when I get around the base of it, I may be less prone to pitch back to them as many times. Um, and then thirdly is mud. Um, I'm going to find some drains, and I'm going to fish right down the center of those drains, and I'm going to drag a jig through the mud. I'm going to drag a heavy jig, more like a three-quarter ounce. I'll make sure that it's plunging in the mud. Um, and dragging those in the mud is going to emulate those crawfish that are moving underneath the mud. And you just might be surprised at how many bites you might find if you do it in the right area. Um, like some of the drains. If you were to go all the way back in Dale Creek where it lies, there's two drains right there. One's a little deeper and steeper than the other. But if you go down the center of that drain and drag a jig slow enough or throw up on some of the flats, the muddy flats, not the solid flats and the hard shell dead flats, but the muddier flats, um, you, you might stand to find a fish that bites. If the sun comes out this weekend, there'll be sun bathers. Uh, and that's where you can throw some square bills and chatter baits and round traps, probably on the red clay and probably, <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm hurt. <coughs> and probably on some of the concrete walls and stuff like that, that the sun is warm training on. But other than that, I don't really have a lot to tell you, other than the lake is rising, and that's a good thing. Um, I'll be back next week, um, next Tuesday. Hopefully, we'll have a little better outlook and what's going on. We're getting really, really close to the season. I don't like booking much in February. The latter part of February, I do have a handful of guide trips. I've only got a couple days left in March. If you want to book with me in March, March is when it kicks off. We do start catching the big fish. Absolutely. Last year, March, March 7th and 8th, we were smacking and we never stopped for about four months. Um, we get into a glide bait bite, a swim bait bite, and a top water bite, and, and everything just kind of progresses together. Um, it's really fun. So if you're really looking to, to get a good bookings, now's the time before there's no dates left. April's starting to fill up. It's probably more than half full or so. Um, and the same thing for May. Um, definitely, if you're considering fishing with us, now's the time to do so. Get booked before there's no openings. Um, also, like if you want to fish the Skeeter event, I think I've only got one day left. I may not, that may not even be true. It's already booked. Um, other than that, I thank you guys for watching. Thanks for your patience. Sorry that I'm, I'm sick and under the weather. <clears throat> I apologize that I'm usually a lot more in, in, energetic and, and enthusiastic. <coughs> I don't wish this on anybody. It's pretty nasty. And um, other than that, I appreciate you. Hit the like button. Hit the comment below if you have any questions, if you're wondering anything. Um, I will tell you that there is a few lakes in the surrounding areas. And, and, and two things. There's, you know, obviously the one you know, Power Plant Lake, warm water. There's there's Martin Creek and Brandy Branch, which are Power Plant Lakes. Um, but there is some other lakes in this area that have grass. I've been saying it quite a bit. Grass acts as a blanket. And, and right now, you can go catch fish. So if you're geared up to go fishing this weekend, um, I, that's what I would do. I would go to uh, another lake around the area that has grass, and, um, and you'll catch bass. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Mike McFarlane here giving you a public rundown for February 2nd, 2023.